This is Bernardo Cano, and you're listening to Five Rounds in the Name. Hello there, and thank you for joining us on this brand new edition of Five Round MMA. My name is Alex Maris. Alongside me is Albert Sita, and absent again is Guillermo Sita this week. Apparently, um, his kids are more important than the show. Apparently, which I, I, mean, don't understand. I'm not, I don't understand the whole fatherhood thing because you know, you know. But anyways, um, I think this week's show uh, we're gonna talk about the whole, um, I guess, action-packed weekend. Friday night with the tough finale. Saturday you had the Fox card. And it's card. funny usually when it's uh, UFC two fights in one night. Or two fights, two nights. It's two days. Two, two back two fights. Day. They're not. They're not that good. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but but they're they're actually surprisingly very very good. Also, and they were free. Yeah. Also, um, some uh, World Series of Fighting 16 or 15. One of the numbers I forgot what. But two title fights on the card. John Fitch gets Husmar Payaris. Um, kind of, did, did this weekend cut into your uh, Christmas shopping? Did we ever get anything done this whole weekend? No, I just canceled my Christmas shopping. Oh, is yeah? what I did. Yeah. In I, general, I, this no, weekend or in general? No, in general, I I canceled yeah? it. I, like. Yeah, and there's no fights uh, this week, but I, I figure I'll just cancel okay. for the two weeks. You know, I, I learned a long time ago. I, I kind of adopt the whole online thing. I'm I'm done with malls. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge Amazon guy. Yeah. If it's on if it's on Amazon Prime, I don't order it. I'm, I'll tell you that right now. Yep. If it's not at Target or Amazon Prime, there's no way I'm getting it. <laughs> okay. So anybody asks for something other than Amazon or Target, they're not gonna get yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sorry, because <laughs> I ain't going to the mall. Very specific. So register for at Target or Amazon for Albert. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of uh, Christmas shopping, we got uh, our fine sponsors probably have a great sales. Uh, first of all, with Rockin' Green Soap, eco-friendly cleaning products. Please, please visit rockandgreensoap.com for the full line of eco-friendly soaps and detergents. And also, if you want some clothes on your on your back. Go, please visit five rounds uh, dot clothing for um their great line of clothes uh, and follow them on Twitter at five rounds five rounds wear and also a big thank you to Redemption Martial Arts Army Foundation so please visit redemptionmartialarts.com dot com to see how you can join the movement to stop bullying so Albert let's start with um I see you kind of jump back and then go we forward look into the future actually because you want to look into the past this is kind of important statement near and dear to your heart early Christmas I mean it, it is you. it is Christmas how, how did the, that one story go Stephen the guy went to the past first and then the future. Back to the Future, right? No, Martin no, McFly I'm talking about Back to the Future. To save, save his the one parents. With, uh, Scrooge. Yeah, there you go. Which, yeah, one do, which one went first? Ghost of Christmas. Past? Present? So, no? Uh, I don't know. So we'll go past. I haven't so read Charles Dickens in a long we'll time. We'll go all the way back to you on uh, Friday, right? Friday? Or you want to look at Saturday? Let's look Friday. Okay, Friday. So Ultimate Fighter finale. Uh, it was a finale slash. It was kind of weird. Like for the first like two hours, it was the Ultimate Fighter finale, mm-hmm. and then uh, like the la- last two hours of the card was, like, was oh, the this is fight, fight night, night, which is kind of yeah. weird. But I guess it was all. Um, yeah, because it kind of threw me off when I saw the title said the Ultimate Fighter, but yet yeah, it was still the actual fight card, just mm. showing the first five girls fight, yeah. and then I guess it went into a fight. Night. So basically, it was a culmination of the, this season of Tough that uh, debuted the women's strawweight division, 115 pounds. We had first a, ever champion. Yeah, first ever champion. The main event was Carla Esparza versus Rose Nama Yunus. Um, I guess you want to jump to the uh, male cards for the because there was a couple of uh, male yeah, fights. Yeah, yeah. KJ there, Noons and Darren Kirshing, which fight. was unfortunate because that ended in a yeah, in a eye poke. Vi- man, that was a vicious eye poke. I don't think I've ever seen such a nasty uh, eye poke. Well, I, I think, think even uh, the one with Phil Davis wasn't as bad. Yeah. I mean, he really dug in there. Yeah. But this one, I mean, it looked like he scratched like his lid, his yeah. eyelid. So I kind of want to stay on this for a little bit because I think uh, from last time I read, Darren Kirchner suffered a torn, a torn tear duct, uh. so he'd be out for a while. But uh, the week before, we saw Francisco Rivera. Yeah, he has, he, he's, he's he, gonna he have had surgery too now on his eye. Um, this is kind of a common occurrence now. Uh, do you think at all the UFC with this whole Reebok deal, like, hey, can you design get, get some gloves Reebok for us? gloves? It, it's funny because uh, we talked about this when your eye favor did the accidental yeah. uh, eye poke and. Um, I, I keep saying that uh, Clip Swanson put up a picture on his uh, Twitter feed, mm. and it was like these gloves that kind of like hang on top of the hands. So when you do go at grapple, you, you still have access to your fingers, mm. which it, you need to do some jujitsu. But uh, the thing will essentially cover, and it makes your hand do this natural position. Yeah. That way you don't do the full extension and accidentally poke someone's eye, really? which I think is probably the best route to take. And it doesn't hurt to try yeah. it. I mean, maybe try like uh, on the next Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. Introducing the new gloves. And maybe like or taping the guys at the top of the fingers, maybe. But or? then you, you limit yourself to the jujitsu. You know what I'm saying? True. I mean, but like I don't know. It's, it's happening more and more. I just think they need with with the technology out there, they should be able to develop a better glove where this doesn't happen because it's starting to become a, not just a frequent thing. But it's I mean, every it, card it, is happening, it, right? When it happens, it's very nasty. And we're getting like a. 
uh, the, obviously this Kirk, Kirk Shank versus Nunes fight was actually kind of exciting. Yeah, no, we were getting a good fight. Yeah, and, and then with the, with the case of uh, Uriah yeah. Faber and Francisco Rivera, a lot of questions left unanswered. I mean, mm. w- was it opportunity Francisco for Rivera was looking really good? Yeah, and then we the couldn't see the, the rise yeah. of a new contender in the division, but yet because of the eye poke. But I mean, obviously, it's all none of it is. Uh, on purpose, all accidental, but it is an important situation. Also, I want to jump to uh, Charles Oliveira, your boy, against Jeremy Stevens. Um, this is a guy you've been on for a while now, right? Charles yeah, Charles Oliveira. I thought he should have made this weight cut a long time ago. I feel he was still kind of developing in, in this weight class, but well, this uh, weight cut, he still didn't make weight this card, didn't he? Well, yeah, Half but a pound like, over. I, 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 like I said, I still think he's still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but I do think this is the weight class he needs to be, and I think he, I think, I think the leisure of time. Has passed him, mm. and I really think after this Jeremy Stevens fight, he really needs to kick it up a notch. Even though he's 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 getting the wins and and and, and competing in the fights he needs to compete in, I think he really needs to start kicking up after this fire house. He's going to get lost in the shuffle. Yeah, I think he's like number fourteen. I think coming in this yeah. fight, so he's going well, around. But, the edge but of even the... worse, I think Jeremy Stevens. Uh, Deflated a lot. I mean, yeah, I, th- I think he was on a roll, kind of like the the Matt Brown syndrome, where yeah. he's on a roll, and all of a sudden you kind of when he, he kinda the competition re- rises, re- reinvented he kinda, himself. He was even yeah. even looking kind of like Robbie Lawler. Yeah, yeah. So just that one thing, I guess. Uh, so let's jump now to the whole uh, women's division, the new strawweight division. I guess the UFC kind of sprinkled it in in the past a little mm. bit, like a little fight, a one fifteen pound fight here and there. But this is like a, a full on massive red carpet debut for the, yeah. the division, right? Um, so uh, some people, I guess, have been kind of getting their. Um, Reaction towards it, some fans are saying, "Well, it's not really a, a real division. It's kind of like the the uh, um, the flyweight for the men. It's only a filler division. Let's see if you know. Let's try and make this card uh, important by throwing a title shot on there. So, just your, your thoughts on this division as a whole and how the UFC handled the um, presentation of it for the debut. Uh, I I I think it's it's important to get these lower weight classes. I still think these weight classes are entertaining. Mm. The only criticism I have is the fact that a lot of the girls don't have the experience. Yeah, and it, and it's hard to take it. I guess uh, I wouldn't say seriously, but it's, it's hard to it's hard to really bite into it because these girls are still developing. A lot of them have a low record. Yeah. Some of them barely just started. Yeah. Uh, but if you look at the top ones, the ones with like Carla Espraza and Jessica uh, Penny, I mean, uh, they're good. Yeah. I mean, they they throw down. They have over ten wins. It's yeah. Like, some girls only yeah, have ten so, wins. Fights total. So right? if there's yeah. any criticism, it's just that I they feel like the there has to be more development in the in that ta- in that weight class. Mm. But. Uh, as far as saying that we shouldn't go to these lower weight classes, I mean, I'm all for them. So, are you more for debuting the lower weight classes, or maybe like getting like a 160 pound champion, like a 190 pound champion? Because there's a lot of guys who are in flux between. Because that's a 20 pound gap mm. between the two divisions between uh, well, when you, lightweight, it, welterweight, and then if, uh, you, if you break it into the men's needs and the mm-hmm. women's needs, I think the men's do need an, a little in between yeah. buffer belt. And the women's, I think you should stick stick to the lower ones. But if you're saying which one's more important, yeah, I don't know because at one point it seemed very important to make like a 160 pound division, yeah, or maybe uh you know a 190 division. Yeah. Uh, at, at at one point now I don't think it's as important as it was before because there's new there, there there's people that that are making more weight mm. in. I don't think there's that, that that I mean Benson Harrison's the only one I can think of that maybe be in between right now. Because I mean that's a huge superstar. Because yeah, they're saying like the 155 is so stacked, but like if it's so stacked, why not just maybe have those guys bleed over a little exactly, bit to 160? Yeah. But we'll see. Also, I'm, I'm gonna cut to the main event now. Carlos Spazza versus Rose Nami Yunus. Uh, Rose was the girl. The Cookie Monster versus the Thug. The Thug, but Rose was the girl earlier on who said this is the next Dana White. I think Ronda Rousey. Oh, no, this is Ronda Rousey said this, this is the next, next Ronda, Ronda Rousey. Or Dana White yeah. said this is the next Ronda Rousey, yeah. and Ronda Rousey agreed with her. He meant it was a pretty girl with some talent and finishes yeah because she finished every single mm-hmm. fight in the ultimate fighter so uh as far as demeanor and personality wise can carla Esparza carry this uh fly, uh strawweight division to new heights maybe or i mean the heights that can how can she carry because you saw uh when rose came out she was like real pumped and like had, had more attitude towards That's, her but then when carla walked in the cage yeah, she was very yeah. stoic and just kind of like just cracking her knuckles I, a little then, bit like no she, personality it, whatsoever even when she came into the octagon yeah. i felt kind of scared for her because i was like dude i think she has like the octagon jitters I'm yeah like, she looked like she's terrified she, I, thought but she, I thought she wasn't even gonna fight that's just her demeanor though i mean yeah can that really be i mean because was it the biggest knock for the flyweight division is that uh, but then again is a very, uh, she has one of the best nicknames uh cookie monster. cookie monster uh i think if she plays into that you know take out some cookies before the fight yeah. you know Really play into that, and I think uh, Ian McCall can help her out when it comes to personality. That's so guy who can sell so maybe, yeah, maybe can work. Uh, so let's jump ahead to the future now, right? You said, yeah, now we're in the future. Now <laughs> the future. Um, also, before we move on, uh, World Series of Fighting 16 did take place between uh, Husmar Payaris and John Finch. Um, it ended pretty quickly. Um, for a John bit, Finch, a little, bit, a little bit too quickly. Um, the same way all his fights end uh, it was a knee bar, arm uh, knee bar, ankle lock. 
Same thing again. There's the ankle knee bar lock. Ankle knee bar. John Finch <laughs> loses again. Um, you you saw you told me yesterday via text this is the end of John Finch. Um, Unfortunately. Yeah. Do you agree with the? Yeah, you, I was. Uh, I was. I was. I was. I don't your, care your how statement? boring those matches were. I still love John Finch. <laughs> I mean, I fell asleep at least three of his matches, but I still loved it. <laughs> you still love the guy. I still. I, it was a good nap. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I really, I really think uh, it, it has passed him. I, I think he. he sh- I don't want to say he should compete, but yeah. I don't think he's in the top tier anymore. I think this is a guy like when he, he announced he's going to World Series of Fighting, people thought he was going to run through it and then get his back his way back to the UFC, but he's two and two now in the World Series of Fighting. Yeah. So maybe these guys just haven't evolved yet, right? I almost feel how Joe Rogan felt when he told Brandon Schwab that he sucked. <laughs> I, I, I gotta tell John Fitch, look listen, bro. Yeah. I love you. I thought you were amazing, but I can't wait to it, get just, to, it just passed your I, time. I can't wait till we get on that on that Joe Rogan level to we invite yeah, for, uh, invite John fighters Fitch, to, uh, to our Fitch studio. Like, Look, listen, John Fitch. <laughs> Isn't that great? Bro. Man, you, you, you don't get a different level. You, you can't move like the top tier no more. You can't even wrestle like the top tier no more, and you're a wrestler. <laughs> the Joe Rogan level is what I want to be on. Um, so let's jump ahead to the future. Uh, early Christmas present for you because who's on the card? For some reason, it's like me and Lil, Lil Machida really do have a connection. Uh, he usually sure fights. He, he usually, same way, he yep. usually fights around my birthday. Yep. So that's just a birthday present for me. I know he does that on purpose. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. He fights during Christmas. Obviously, that's the only thing I ask for. That's the only thing on my Santa's list is to see some cheetah. <laughs> okay. So I really do think uh, uh, me and him are, are very spiritually connected. Yeah. And he's gonna face CB Dalloway. Uh, CB Dalloway is actually in a in a run. Uh, I don't think he's in this type of. I don't think he's in the top tier. If he beats. Just Lil say, Machida, I think you, you don't think he's yeah. in Machida's class? I don't think so. But <laughs> he has been making a splash, and he has been on his own little run. And he's he, he's, he's a he's a rough fighter. Yeah. But uh, Machida actually does pretty good against these these these, these more around uh, rough around the edges fighters. Well, his last win did come out of uh, Francis Cormon. I think he sent him out of the UFC, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he did lose to Tim Bosch. Yeah, he did lose. So that's kind of like a little blimp on his right. So what what's the benefits for Machida other than the paycheck in this fight? Uh, I think it keeps them relevant, mm-hmm. and, it, and, it, and, it, and it stops from eliminating a lot of fighters at 185. Because right now, you pretty much have, like, five people that Chris Wyman can face. Mm-hmm. But if you have them face each other, then you only have, like, two. Okay. So I think this just keeps uh, uh, fighters relevant. It keeps Lil Machida relevant, and he doesn't have to eliminate one of the people that oh, so are like, props, and, possibly Instead of, like, contender. Machida Rockhold or Machida uh, uh, Jacques Ray. Yeah, yeah. This is kind of like Machida just kind of... Yeah, because if, if it would have been Machida Jacare or, or Machida, it's a title limiter. Right? Yeah, then then I don't think I don't think it would benefit UFC. I think this way, but see, and, and then there's the flip side. If CB Dollar can't get a win, wow, now you have another contender, another contender. in there too. And I don't think if, if Louis Machida loses, depending on how he loses, mm. but let's say he loses by decision, I don't think his stock uh, lords. And, yeah, and he's still somewhat a contender if he can get uh, yeah, a couple he's still wins under his belt. So, um, yeah. So it's a co-main event. Uh, Henry Brown makes his return against Mitch Gagnon after who, that crazy. Um, couldn't make weight. Yeah. So. Um, um, thirty-two and two up against twelve and two, but yeah, but Mitch is on a four-fight win streak. Mm-hmm. Um, is this another just kind of warm-up match? I think for Henry Brown, or do you think the UFC actually believes in no, Mitch? No, no, no. I really, everything they just want to get Henry Brown out there for, before people forget mm-hmm. who he is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we got my boy Patrick Cummings. Uh, as he wins. I think we all win because Why? that makes uh, DC look better. I don't think DC needs Patrick Cummings to justify his career I do. anymore. I, I think, think so. I think possible. Patrick Cummings needs at least two more wins to show everybody that he wasn't he wasn't just a nobody. <laughs> also, uh, one more a notable fight on this card. I want to bring my to your ex attention boy. your ex boy Eric uh, Silva. He he's one of my ex take that relationships. Sound, here. Take that sound clip, please, Stephen, so we could play that uh, <laughs> against Albert at will. Um, Eric Silva. I was on the Eric Silva train. I got off of it since his last performance against. Matt was Brown. it the Matt Brown fight? Yeah, and uh, I gave it up all hope. I, uh, I'm not even going to watch that. I'm actually going to skip that fight. You mm-hmm. can tell me later uh, the what, what was the outcome. Uh, I'm not disappointed. Uh, well, it seems like they might be giving him uh, no disrespect to uh, Mike Rhodes, but he is six and three on a two fight skid going into this bout. Um, so I don't know if he took this fight on short notice or what, but. Um, it doesn't seem like it was a very competitive. Match. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it was Joe Silver, the new matchmaker. But uh, anyways, that should be it. That UFC uh, fight night takes place December twentieth. So past 20th. future, we're gonna do some present next. Well, right? kind of not so distant past. <laughs> we're gonna talk about UFC on Fox card uh, again. The uh, UFC fight night, Machida versus Dalloway, December twentieth, live from Brazil. So stick around. We're talk about UFC on Fox. Please visit FiveRoundMMA.com on our social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. FiveRoundMMA.com. Thank you for sticking around. We're talking about USC on Fox, Dos Santos versus Miocic. Um, 
a lot of heavyweight car on the main on the Fox actual broadcast, a lot of heavyweight yeah. bouts, but from top to bottom, um, this car was pretty stacked. Yeah, it, it, the stackness was definitely there. Yeah, well, not stackness as far as names, but as far as uh, fights, it was pretty uh, stacked, right? Yeah. As fight outcomes. And it was, I think it was the best outcome Dana White could have prayed for. I mean, he hasn't really had that much success on UFC or on Fox as, yeah, far yeah. As, as far as the fight turnout. Yeah. And I think. He actually got what he envisioned in his mind. Yeah, the main as cards far as were, how the, especially the on the Fox play broadcast. Um, what do you want to start with? Uh, we can start all the way down to uh, the fight pass. Okay. Because I just want to mention uh, Henry Quejudo or Cajiro. I don't know. See, I'm 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 Hispanic and mm-hmm. I still can't say his last okay. name. Okay. Don't be ashamed uh, of that. But uh, yeah, uh, he had an awesome performance. Uh, there was a lot of hype behind him. He didn't make his weight twice in a row at flyweight. At flyweight. Right? Yeah. Uh, they told him you gotta fight now in bantamweight. But now he wants to try again in flyweight. So hopefully they give him that opportunity because he really is a good fighter and he's a wrestler. And for some reason he's he wanted to stand up to show everybody like, hey, yeah. I'm not just a wrestler. Is that kind of weird? Like a wrestler can't make weight? Does that? he said it was a lot of things well he said he even he's been cutting to 125 his whole life and i guess the the, his body's not reacting the way i guess i don't know (laughs) a bunch of science i don't know i don't understand but uh hopefully he finds his place because i thought he was an exciting fighter and i think he's someone to look out for i think that the flyweight can use some new blood i think sergio pettis talking about going out of flyweight too so and i think we should just skip all the way up to the john moraga fight i don't think we should even mention another flyweight (laughs) <laughs> yeah, another another flyweight battle here. John Moraga uh, held his own uh, against Willie Gates, a local Southern California fighter. I yeah, think we we, we seen a, we seen a lot of Willie Gates yeah. fights. Uh, Willie actually. Gates is kind of un- un- unorthodox all yeah. the place. But I, guess, I guess the way everything turned out was it was supposed to be uh, Bobby Green um, uh, fighting. Um, he was fighting somebody at 155. Yeah. Um, and his training partner is Willie Gates, mm-hmm. and I think that's how I, I, I got into I, the door. It, it, it got into into, into fruition. But, uh, yeah, Willie Gates had a pretty good performance. There was a little minor, um, I guess, controversy, you, you can say. Well, like a low blow just, break. And then yeah, and then, but he still, I mean, you got to listen to the ref. The ref said yeah. fight on, so you fight on. Yeah, John Moraga, uh, uh, um, former title contender, just kind of stayed relevant again. A good fight, good performance. It's a finish. Uh, not a finish, but uh, um, a victory, so that's all you needed. Um, I think we had the number one contender bout for the first ever strawweight championship with this bout, right? With uh, Claudia uh, Gadea and Joanna Jurgistics, Jurgistics, which was another fighter. controversial fight, right? No, there was after the fight, and there was a kind of a uh, after the whistle or after the uh, the bell blows. But um, it was a good scrappy fight. Uh, yeah. Joanna won, so um, she's now I think going to challenge for the um, strawweight, strawweight belt. Uh, belt. She's a stand up uh, Muay Thai fighter, so against uh, Carlos Brothers Wrestling. So let's jump to the main card now, I guess, shall we? Um, Matt Matrione, uh he's on cloud nine. Uh, and like a, a big cloud, cloud nine. But I mean, as far as this is a shallow division, the heavyweight. No, no if ands or buts about yeah, it. The heavyweight it, division is a shallow division. Um, with I guess the recent injury of Cain Velasquez, it's a, up for grabs. A, a, anybody's grabs is is Matt Mitchell up there now? I think so. If he can get past a bigger opponent, mm-hmm. yeah, Gabriel Gonzaga ha- used to have a name. I don't yeah. think it, it's a, it was as relevant as it was before. But I think as long as he beats someone like Todd Duffy or even uh, faces Austin Overeem mm-hmm. or or Travis Brown, if he can get past these guys or get give him a fight, he 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 gets uh, launched to the top five. That is big. That his kind of Achilles heel. He has three losses: uh, one to Czech Congo, another one to Roy Nelson, mm-hmm. and his last one was to Brendan Shaw. But we kind of know what. Joe Rogan broke that. not even a fighter anymore. Um, so let's go to another heavyweight bout: uh, Alistair Overeem versus Stefan Struve in a kind of an awkward fight. That was it, it made sense game plan wise. Yeah, but like you know, Stefan Steph Struve's over seven feet tall, and what's that saying? Uh, they're all the same height when they're on their back. Yeah, game plan execution. But I think Alistair Overeem now, no matter what he does in the UFC, he's always going to be the butt of everybody's jokes now, right? <laughs> I mean, nobody I, t- does. I, everybody yeah, take it seriously. Yeah. I mean, but uh, I, I will give some truth. This he, even Karen he, Bryant told like uh, was making fun of him on the post post fight. So it's like whatever he does, I think he's a joke to everybody now. I, I it's it, it just sucks for Stephen's truth that he goes back and forth as yeah. far as fighting. I mean, he has a win over Stephen, mm-hmm. which which not that many people uh, know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Stephen's truth, I think, still has it. He's I think he's young enough that. He can take these losses as long as he gets a couple wins in between. Mm. And I which, think he's, which, a, he's which only he, twenty six years old. Yeah, too, which so he like, has been doing. Yeah, yeah, he does lose some of these bigger fighters, mm. but he still uh, manages to um, um, rally up and yeah. get a couple wins. As a matter of fact, he was supposed to fight, fight Matt Mitchell before he had that um, heart condition yeah. uh, happen backstage. So maybe maybe he goes up against Matt Mitchell and uh, sees if he can still hang. Okay, so you completely. Um, 
I'm not dancing about... around my Alistair Overeem comment. Yes. So what do because you think about it? I don't talk about the ring. <laughs> you don't talk it, about it? Yeah. I, that derogatory guy, at all? That guy gets very upset. <laughs> if I ever bump into the man, I don't want to be in his bad sight. <laughs> all right. So this uh, co-main event now, Rafael, Rafael Dos Anjos versus Nate Diaz in a very awkward fight. Nate Diaz came in with five pounds overweight. Uh, at, yeah. Wait, you're talking 160, about 160 division. Yeah. So. And he didn't even try to do a second <clears throat> um, attempt. He just said, you know what? Screw it. You're 20% of my purse. I think he kind of knew already that, hey, I think he just whole fight announcement the whole training camp he's yeah. like well, I'm not even prepared for this I'm just here to get paid whatever I can um, people were praising Rafael Dos Anjos for his performance but is it really saying much that he's able to beat up a guy who wasn't even prepared to fight uh, I think so yeah. it's just because, it because uh, of, uh, of what Nate Diaz has done in the past I think yeah that's what I'm saying uh, uh, Dana White holds the Diaz brothers way up there despite what he says and about their nonsense mm. he held them in, in a very high caliber mm. so if he can beat these guys I feel that um, it does mean something just because, you know, they're always in the uh, limelight as far as media-wise. Yeah. And uh, Rafael dos, dos Anjos, I mean, who else would he have fought? It doesn't matter who do you fight. I think it, it, if he would have got a win, people would still say the same thing. Like, yeah. well, I'm not sure, but who is he supposed to fight? Your Melendez just fought, so he can't necessarily fight anybody that's higher mm. than him. Yeah. So uh, I, I think he – but what sucks for him, I, I really do think he has to wait it out. Well, I, I think they're announcing right too. He's going to be next in line for uh, Pettis. But what about Nakakum? He's hurt. He's hurt. I I don't know. I I, he's I, hurt. I I really think that's 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 the fight to see. But I yeah, guess but he's hurt. if you if you can make the fight in between when he gets healthy, yeah, that's, then what, I that's exactly what they're doing. I'm, I'm uh, telling you, I'm not speculating. I'm telling you, Kahim, that that's what they're going to do. Nakakum, yeah, he's hurt saying, though. But you were saying on Twitter that he would have been fine <laughs> for by by when? I don't know. He didn't tell me a date. Because uh, that that's speculation too. That Anthony Pettis hurt his hurt his hand after the given Lens fight. But I suppose he's fine now. So I think. They could yeah. line up for like a March date, I think, if they want to. Yeah, so. I think I think that's the the where they're trying Cause to according, get uh, back up there. <laughs> from what I heard, the UFC they only have what just uh, January and February, March all settled out, right? Yeah, so, and they have all the January cards, all the February cards. It's just seeing commercials, anyways. Yeah, and then after the rest of the year is a complete uh, mystery. So maybe maybe that could be the but March. But the time is now. The though. time is now in March for Anthony. The Pettis time is now. R uh, RDS, but I think uh, for Nate Diaz, people forget that it, he's minus what six fights. He's fought his whole career in the UFC. Yeah. So we've actually seen this guy kind of develop. D- not develop. I mean, we've seen his whole career basically. So yeah. I mean, this is a guy. I think the UFC, like you said, was season five winner, the Ultimate Fighter, when it kind of meant something back then. And I guess they don't. They know it does have a soft spot with the Diaz, but that's right for sure. The, both these guys can battle out for him. So I mean, we'll see if he get his. Uh, I know there's been some question about his camp. What well, Gilbert Melendez has his own thing now. Jake Shields left, and then kind of just him and his brother now. It's always been like lone yeah. wolves almost now. So because yeah. the the last five fights, he only has won one. Yeah. So he's kind of in like a weird zone right now where yeah. he's still. I mean, he's still there. But he's almost on his way out. I mean, you've been fighting for so long. It's kind of like, yeah. do, you, do you still want to do this? And like, that's true. But he complains that he has no money. So yeah, I know. But apparently, then he has to keep fighting. Got like to find a new way time. of a uh, new way to make a living. Okay, so main event now: JDS against Stipe Miocic. Um, was a five round grueling battle. Um, I think after the, it could have been ended after three rounds, would have been a great fight. But the last two kind of just lingered on. Uh, other than that, what that big takedown from JDS? The last two rounds were just kind of like huffing and puffing and. Uh, Whiffing away. So, did you agree with the decision? Do you think JDS won the uh, fight? I I don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. I can see. You them. live with it. I, I, can you I, live with I, it? I can live with it. Okay. But with that said, though, with that said, I thought some of the judges were ridiculous. I think they're I, you stifling the uh, minimum one two rounds. That's mm. I don't think you yeah, can even dispute two, that yeah. or whatever. But some of the judges here had it 49, 46, yeah, 49, 46. four rounds of one, right? Yeah. So. I'm not sure what fight they were watching, but Siphon at least won the first two. Mm-hmm. I think, like, hands down. The third one, he kind of slowed down, but he had his moments in the third. Yeah. The fourth one, he really took a dump in the fifth run. I mean, he did, ha- he did have some highlights, but I think J- JDS did, did the most part of it. So, basically, but, uh, in agreement, it was, what, 2-2 two, two going in the fifth yeah, round, right? Yeah, I, 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 can, I can see it going to JDS, but I think the, the scorecards do not reflect yeah. what, what the fight really was. And I do think Siphon did win. I think he did enough in that third round. Mm. And, to kind of cement that he won the fight. So uh, these, these past couple of weeks, we've seen a lot of the heavyweight heavyweights in action with the, obviously this card, and then last week we saw Todd Duffy. Um, are you still? How do you feel about the heavyweight division? It, it's kind of clear. It's kind of like developing itself. <laughs> yeah, I but think, I mean, like, how do you, uh, I mean, as far as like contenders wise, it seems like it's the same guys we're talking about. We're talking about Verdum. We're talking about JDS again. Yeah, yeah, in the in the very top three. Yeah. But if you look at b- below that, and now we have Travis Brown. Now we have Stephen to talk about. Travis Brownie also over him still stays mm-hmm. relevant. Matt Mitrione, <coughs> I guess, uh, is, in, is in the talk. Todd Duffy's yeah. in the mix. I mean, there's people there. 
So it's not as as thin as we thought it used yeah. to be. I think because before we thought it was literally up to just three people. Yeah. Well, now for it, a while it's two people just uh, JDS now, and Kane. Now, now it seems we might have three more people. Okay. <laughs> we went from two to five. All right. Um, but let's go back to the uh, the game plan. Uh, JDS did switch camps for this one with the new Nuva Owl with uh, uh Hannah Burrell and um with the little people and Jose Aldo. I don't but know. I don't know why a heavyweight switches to a bantamweight camp. <laughs> I don't know why either. But um. Going to the fight, Stepe Miocic's uh, game plan was a Cain Velasquez game plan. Just press him, yeah. get some fans, tire him out. And that was working. And, and, and credit, credit to Cain Velasquez. That shows you how much uh, cardio the guy has. Yeah. Because Siphon was tired after the first two rounds trying to do the Cain Velasquez game plan, which was working mm-hmm. excellently. But he's just, I, I, he's got super tired. And that just shows Cain never got yeah. tired when he was doing so it. So this kind of uh, my question around. So the biggest question isn't if JJS could beat everybody else in the division. is if JJS can beat Cain Velasquez. And uh, from what I gauge on, on social media, a lot of people say, no, he can't. Well, after that performance, it's 100%. Hundred percent no. Yeah. If Stifin can do that to you, yeah. well, who is not really a established a wrestler, wrestler a, or, or, or yeah, or known for for his cardio, uh, just shows you that um, I, if you can find anybody, I mean, not even King Velasquez, if you can find someone with a decent wrestling background mm. and good cardio in that division, they can be JDS. Yeah, I think, or I think, just I, a, a, able to adopt the, the I, game I think, plan. Right? I think I think the game plan's already there for for whoever faces JDS from now on. So now, versus Ver- 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 Doom. Versus Ver- Doom, I don't know how his cardio is, but. Uh, I, I think you should push the base and uh, <laughs> uh, smother him. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. Maybe JDS should kind of just maybe peak too early. You think maybe? Yeah. Just saying uh, like uh, he uh, he adopted way back to his boxing. Did, did all, did the whole last two rounds was boxing. Match. I think it's one of those things where when a fighter really gets exposed for their weakness, mm-hmm. then it's all down. Here. I mean, there's there's been a couple of fighters. Where as soon as they one guy beats him, uh, the game plan is there for everybody else, yeah. and it's kind of a down downhill because it's it's like they reach a, a part where. Yeah, you can change your 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 fight again, but you already established so much of it. The muscle memory is so there that yeah. it's hard to kind of break 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 that uh, cycle. Well, we shall see. I don't I don't think the UFC has announced anything uh, in terms of uh, Verdum. I think they're going to be out for no, Velasquez. No, I right? think yeah, it's up to Kim Velasquez. Hopefully, he comes back in March, yeah. and we don't have to worry about this whole Junior Dos Santos debacle. And then, like you said, just and sorts itself out. Yeah, right? hopefully, Todd Duffy steps up. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. So speaking of sorting itself sorting itself out, I think we're done for the day. Let's sort this episode out. Yeah. Um, Take us away. I mean, uh, uh, until then, make sure to. Yeah, I always yeah, forget yeah. this last you part. Always, you, always, you always hate to hit us up on social. I know. I, I'm, I'm very bad at self promotion, but uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Five Round MMA. Also, uh, like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic. Uh, like us on Instagram. That's F-I- apparently we're doing pretty good on Instagram. F I V. Yeah, people, I think, uh, are kind of. They're t- liking a little bit. Of yeah, it. I think I think Twitter's too much bit. reading for people. I think. Yeah. It's a picture that click it, and like it. Twitter, mm. Facebook, too much reading. Um, so uh, leave leave the tweets for the celebrities. <laughs> I say. Yeah. Uh, until then, follow us at all. Uh, uh, social media formats and uh, take us away. I'd like to thank our uh, sound engineer over there, Steven Razzle Razzle Records. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for listening. Uh, today's TLC. <laughs> And I think what are you the, doing? I think the Undertaker <laughs> okay. is going to make a, a, a reappearance. The, you know what? Steve if, is back. if you're listening Listen. to the show and not watching it, Albert just like unzipped uh, his I, sweater. I, I, my sweater. I, 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 I try to make it so you can hear it. Okay. But anyways, uh, uh, Sting came back, okay. right? Uh, Steven's super psyched about that. He, he's been. Pu- I mean, this guy. <laughs> have, I haven't seen him pumped since the, since junior high school. <laughs> uh, Sting's so the NWO, Sting, right? Sting is back. I think the Undertaker might make a return soon because okay. I think they're gonna try to do Sting versus Undertaker rather than Triple H versus Sting. And I'm just, that's just my opinion. Okay. Uh, thanks everybody for listening.